Detective O'Malley, if you like. You must be Frank Patton. I don't know why you are here. I already talked to two detectives. I've been in this room for what seems like forever. One minute, Frank. I'm almost done. So, Frank, where did you get the gun? What? The rod, gat, heater, piece. You know, the gun, Frank. The one that you used to kill your wife. I don't know. I found it in the apartment in the dresser drawer. And that was not my wife. Gotcha, Frank. Relax. Don't let these questions get under your skin. They're just questions. So you found the gun in your apartment? That's what I said. It was in the dresser. This light, is there any way to adjust it? Not that I'm aware of, Frank. So back to the gun. You said you found it in the dresser. Was it loaded? Yes. So you found the gun in your dresser, or was it the chest of drawers? What's the difference? You see, Frank, I store my clothes in the chest of drawers. My wife, she uses the dresser. I mean, that's pretty normal. You know, unless you're a single man, and you're not a single man. Well, not before the incident. Why does it make a difference if I found it in the chest of drawers or the dresser? Frank. We found a receipt in your apartment, and it was in the dresser. So? It shows that your wife bought that gun, Frank. Now, she didn't find it on the street, and it wasn't a friend's. So I have to ask you, why would your wife, who by all appearances was a normal, everyday, God-fearing housewife with no enemies in the world, need a gun to protect herself? My wife wouldn't need one. Maybe whatever that thing was that took her place did. Maybe, Frank. But I'm sure if anything alien made it all the way to Earth, they more than likely would bring their own weapons to protect themselves. I can't imagine how archaic our technology would be to them. So you say? Yes, I do, Frank. Yes, I do. So back to the gun, Frank. When you found the gun, did you confront your wife about it? No, I just hid it in the closet. You weren't curious, Frank? Never asked your wife why she thought she needed a gun? never occurred to me to ask. Now see, that bothers me, Frank. And that's going to bother the district attorney, too. Why would a man who finds a loaded gun in his wife's dresser drawer not confront her? She bought it for a reason. I have no idea why she bought the thing. Did your wife ever threaten you? Can't say she ever did. We had a great marriage. Well, Great up until you put a bullet in her. That was not my wife. Why is it so cold in here? It's not cold, Frank. It's about 70 degrees. The station got air conditioning a few years back. It feels a lot colder than that. I know what you mean, Frank. My sainted mother, God rest her soul, she would go to the moving picture show every Saturday afternoon. She bought herself a big box of buttered popcorn. But then the owner installed refrigerated air. So my mother had to bring her coat and mittens with her, even, to, even in the summer. Imagine that. A woman sitting in a crowded theater watching the latest summer release, eating buttered popcorn with her mittens on. Why didn't she just take the mittens off? The theater I go to serves the popcorn hot. I don't know, Frank. People do the strangest things for the strangest reasons. Take your wife, for instance. She gathers up her pin money, and instead of going out and treating herself to something nice like a new hat or fancy undergarments, perfume, or what have you, no, she heads down to uh, Polanski's Pawn Shop over in Tremont and purchases a 38 caliber Colt snub-nosed detective special, and you, after finding the weapon, don't even inquire about it. Are you going to drink that coffee? The smell of it is making me sick. Sorry, Frank. Isn't that cold? It's lukewarm. But cold coffee and long hours are just part of the territory for me, Frank. I hit it because... I hit it because...
because I thought she was going to murder me when I fell asleep. Oh, uh, why would she want to murder you, Frank? Did you have something going on with a dolly on the side? No, nothing like that. She was acting strange, distant, not herself. How so? I came home from work early a few times. Hi, honey, I'm home. Honey, are you okay? So your wife didn't even acknowledge you when you entered the apartment? She hadn't since the incident. It was as if I wasn't even in the room. Your apartment, Frank, it's... It's kind of sparse. You and the wife having money problems? I got plenty of bread. Enough to open a bakery, if you know what I mean. We ain't starving. Frank, don't get frosted. I'm just trying to... I think you're trying to razz my berries. Not at all, Frank. I'm just looking for answers. Last year was a banner year for me. The wife and I were saving for a house, and she refused to buy any furniture. Okay, Frank, I get that. I mean, it says here that you're a door-to-door -door salesman. You a pretty good salesman? I'd like to think so. Salesman of the year last year. And doing much better this year. Hey, a big up for that, Frank. What kind of vacuums do you sell? Top of the line, Little Giants. Now, great product, Frank. I bought one for the little woman about a year ago. All she does is rave about it. Which model did you buy? The Boy Wonder. Came with an arm full of attachments, and I hope to have it paid off in about 14 more installments. The Boy Wonder. That's one of our best-selling product lines. It's a complete home care system that converts into 11 separate units, all powered by the same plant. Imagine the engineering that went into that. It goes from an upright vacuum cleaner to a canister vacuum cleaner to a carpet shampooer, floor buffer. Frank, Frank, you're preaching to the choir. I already own one. Sorry about that. Once a salesman, always a salesman. When going door to door, Frank, do people find you hairy at the heel? Some do, most don't. Can't really say it happens often. I'm selling an honest product, and those little giants speak for themselves. A great product at a great price. And what kind of vacuum do you own? Same. A boy wonder. Why? Well, before I got here, I stopped by your apartment to take a look around. Now, you're telling me that the wife would sit there and listen to white noise coming from the Atwater Kent. Didn't cook, didn't clean, just stared at that radio like it contained moving pictures. Yet the apartment was immaculate. Cleanest apartment that I've ever seen. I even white gloved it, Frank. Not a speck of dust to be found. It's a globe trotter. What? The radio. It's not an Atwater Kent. It's an RCA globe trotter. If you say so. But it just makes me wonder, Frank. Your wife was a church-going housewife. No kids. Plenty of time to clean if she so desired. Heck, it, it almost looked like she was obsessed with cleaning. So why was the apartment so clean, Frank? No idea. I didn't have my peepers on her all hours of the day. I work for a living. Can I ask you what type of shoes you wear while canvassing? Why do you want to know that? Just that I do a lot of walking, Frank. Really has nothing to do with the case. Darby Brokes, for the most part. When I'm not working, I throw on a pair of brothel creepers. Were you in the war? No, I ask because that's when I was first introduced to brothel creepers. You see, I was assigned to the counterintelligence corps back then, and one of my assignments was in North Africa, among others. You know, those were tough times, Frank. One of my most memorable assignments was the Manhattan Project back in, uh, in, in Los Alamos and Santa Fe. I actually witnessed the implosion of the first atomic bomb at Trinity. That's something I'll never forget. Nope. Served stateside. Witnessed the Big Bang, did you? 
Hell of a bomb, Frank. Hell of a bomb. So you got a plum job with the military. Not really. I was a Seventh-day Adventist back then. Ended up swinging a shovel for a number of rural conservation projects. Nine hours a day, six days a week. Built a lot of reservoirs and dams. Got out of it in March of 47. Conscientious objector. Yep. A lot of people thought we were being unpatriotic, but with my religious upbringing and beliefs, that wasn't the case. I don't like to talk about it much. Nothing wrong with that, Frank. Our medics were objectors, but their quick actions saved quite a few of our boys. Are we almost done? I'm freezing. Well, Frank, trick Jane out until they quit singing. Why all the gobbledygook anyway? I like to think that I'm cooking with gas here. I'm just trying to have a conversation, you know, to keep things pleasant. But the reality is the boys upstairs, Frank, the ones that really matter, they have a lot of questions about this murder investigation. And you have to admit, Frank, that by stating that your wife was an alien, it's raised quite a few eyebrows around here. Yeah, I guess. Frank, look at it from my point of view. I have a guy in front of me, a Seventh-day Adventist, who picked up a gun and shot his wife. Was a Seventh-day Adventist. I switched religions when I got married. The wife was Catholic, and a very devout one at that. So back to your story. Tell me, what else was your wife doing that was strange or out of character? I followed the wife a couple of times. She ended up on the west bank of the flats. Your wife prone to taking walks at night by herself? Not that I was ever aware of. Not before the incident, anyway. So if she's wandering around in the flats, was she looking for something? Did she meet anyone? I don't know. She just kept walking. And every once in a while, she would take that little black box out and look at it. About that little black box, Frank. Yeah. We found it in your wife's coat pocket. What do you make of it? I have no idea, Frank. No idea. The guys upstairs cracked it open to see what makes it tick. Can't make heads nor tails out of it. So, what else was so strange about your wife taking a walk? You mean besides the black box and walking around the flats by herself at night? Yeah, Frank. Besides that. She ended up over the cement company docks. Did anyone see you or your wife down there? No. Just some young couple playing backseat bingo. They didn't cast an eyeball my way, if that's what you're asking. You think we can find that couple, Frank? You know, to maybe help collaborate your story? I doubt it. There must be a gazillion guys out there sporting a jelly roll and driving their parents' tank around. Well, what about the babe? Too dark, so I didn't get a good look. But I guess she was a paper shaker and he was a letterman. Oh, and there was a mirror warmer on the car. So they were probably high school kids. So what happened next? The wife takes out that little black box, opens her mouth, and she sounded like that noise in between the radio stations. Wait noise from a radio. That's right. Like she was using a walkie-talkie or something. She spoke into the thing, but her mouth wasn't moving. Spoke? Not a language, but that, what did you call it? White noise? And how long did that go on? A couple minutes. I can't say for sure. I didn't stay long. Figured I'd better get back to the apartment before she does, so I left. So that's it. You're done? Well, I am, but you're not. What do you mean? Well, Frank, the next up is above my pay grade, and it involves a couple of hard-boiled characters who are going to transport you to Paradise Ranch in Nevada to a little place we call Area 51. Why there? It's a safe and secluded area. There the boys are going to put you through the ringer, Frank. They aren't going to settle for the pablum that you've been spewing at me. They're going to get the truth out of you no matter what it takes. I'll never talk. It's not my concern, Frank. After this, I'm heading to Buffalo, New York. It appears that there are a couple of women up there that also claim that their husbands have been acting strange.
adjusting your time frame. This room is soundproof. Well, good luck, Frank, or whatever you are. You're going to need it. Because from what I hear, they like the rough house at Area 51. of Mars stands the secret layer of a group of men dedicated to ensuring the safest possible space environment. These are the continuing adventures of the, the Intergalactic Space, space Patrol. Patrol. In our last episode, the youngest member of the junior space adventurers, Timmy, lay unconscious at the bottom of a Martian well with his trusted and faithful robot dog companion, Sparky the Space Dog, at his side. Attention, Intergalactic Space Patrol Junior members, we need your help. Space Command has just sent us a secret message that needs to be decoded. So remove your Space Patrol badges with their built-in secret decoder and stand by to help decrypt this important message to help save Timmy.